anyone ever stop to figure out just how many fish there are in the sea? Well, there are more than have ever been caught anyway. Remember this for a starter. We and our neighbors and the other poor fish eat 20 billion pounds a year, one and a half billion dollars worth. And only a few kinds of fish are good eating. We're talking about sea fish, not the trout and the perch and the catfish. It's sure we don't eat all the fish in the sea because fish eat fish. As the old poem says, great fish on little fishes feed and these in turn on those of lesser bulk. Now take these porpoise, the comedians of the ocean wave. No good for food. They make good leather and the finest lubricating oil used for watches and clocks. These clowns will tag along with a boat for hundreds of miles. Oh, this is a grand trip. Down the Mexican coast, where the gamey fishes play. Yes, sir, this surely is a fine cruise. Although we haven't come into the game fish waters yet. I don't suppose any one man could ever learn all about every kind of fish. There are over 20,000 known and classified different kinds. Each one with its own double jointed jawbreaker of a name. The cook, he doesn't care what the name is so long as the fish is palatable. It's pretty soft for Cookie with his own private market right at the back door. And the seagulls, too. Ah, they say, easy pickings for breakfast. Now, hi, yells the lookout. He sighted a tuna boat. Now see how part of that 20 billion pounds gets into the cans. This commercial slaughter of the innocents is pretty brutal work. The men throw out the chum. The fish swarm about the delectable morsels. But there's nothing chummy about the way they're caught. Bear hooks on stout lines, catch as catch can, heave them in board. What an indignity, throwing these beauties around like so much cordwood. But now, this is where the sportsman gets into action. Catching the tuna with rod and reel is sport. This originated at Santa Catalina. The Avalon Tuna Club regulates the length of the line and the weight of the rod to give the fish some sort of a break. From Avalon, it spread to Florida, New Zealand, Europe. No doubt about the tuna being a game fish. Anytime you get a 10-footer weighing up to 1,500 pounds on that line, you know you've got a fight on your hands. There he is, barely hooked. Now, all you've got to do is land him. Oh, is he a fighter? I'll never give him any slack. Play him, tire him out, that's the trick of it. The song of the reel is music to the sportsman. What a game guy that fish is. Often they'll fight for hours. Once a man, an American at that, off the English coast fought a tuna for more than 24 hours. Wrists and forearms get the strain. Oh, yes, it takes power, a quick eye. Look, what's the matter with the lookout? See that menacing fin? Shark after the hooked tuna. The shark couldn't catch him if he wasn't handicapped that way. Shark, tiger of the sea. Of all sea terrors, the shark is the meanest, the most crafty, merciless, tremendous strength with an uncanny sense of smell. They'd rather steal like this than hunt their own prey. One 40-foot shark was killed and a 100-pound sea lion found in his stomach, some swallower. A fossil shark has been found, held over from prehistoric times, 90 feet in length. Well, now this is developed into a three-cornered battle, man against tuna, tuna against shark. What a battle it is. The terrific power of those mighty tails flailing the water. The tuna, the largest of the mackerel family, the shark, well, uh, let's just call him by his true name. That sounds like mule skinner language. Lurotrimi Salakians. That's just what you are, you robber. Lurotrimi Salakians. You've got all the best of it, for the tuna can't attend to business. To bring the tuna to gap is, uh, is no chore for a landlubber. But these deep-sea fishermen are superhuman. 
Almost anybody can hold a pole, but it takes a body of steel and rawhide to do the dirty work like this. Good man, he's got him aboard. Goodness sakes alive, that shark made a pretty fair start at his lunch before he was interrupted. He must be taught a lesson, that shark, a lesson that'll last him the rest of his life. Here, take a smell of this nice pork. He took it all right, hook, line, and sinker, if any. You know that's all hooey about the shark having to turn over on his back to bite. He does sometimes if his victim is up on the surface. No, Mr. Shark, they don't waste any good line and reel on you. Just a half-inch rope and a heavy bar. They know your habit of spinning and fouling a line when you're hooked. You're no good sport who gives a fisherman a run for his money. The only thing you're good for is shark skin and glue, and maybe your liver will try out some pretty fair oil, and the China boy may make himself some shark fin soup. Ooh, what an ugly brute. Those teeth are just about the most terrible crunchers in creation. Three sets, one inside the other, could rip the sight of a rhinoceros open. You might as well give up and play dead, Mr. Shark. No? Well, uh, maybe he doesn't fancy a boat trip. He might get seasick. Isn't that a sweet little playmate for a bathing party? Welcome aboard the lugger. How do you like him, Cookie? No, sir, if that's a fish, I'll never eat another sardine. Well, the expedition is underway again. Daily wondering just what the next hour will bring forth is what gives spice to life. You know this sitting on the string piece of the village dock and dangling an angleworm on the end of a line with a cork on it may be all very well in its way, but it don't weigh enough or the fish don't. Now here is something that does weigh enough, weighs plenty. This commercial fishing boat has caught a manta, not a very big one, only about a ton, but they eat their weight in fish each day. They're too greedy, spoils fishing for the boats. Say, there's an idea. That must be good sport, catching one of those terrors of the deep. For real sport, you know, there must always be that element of danger, of fight to send the old blood tingling up the spine. All life is a battle ever since the cavemen fought for every mouthful of their food. So, the only thing to do is to give the giant a go after him in a small boat which the manta could swamp with one flip of his great pectoral fin. The manta, or giant ray, is one of the wonders of nature. It's almost impossible to believe that such a vast creature grows from a small egg, but it does. The egg has little tendrils hanging from it, and the mother scratches the egg off against a rock on the seafloor, where it grows to man's size, and then some. It's quite a problem for the harpooner to pick a spot where his barb will catch hold. It's like shooting an arrow into a feather pillow. But this boy knows, zam, right through the skull. That's the spot, all right. The giant ray has a soft skull, all cartilage. Now, oh, what a ride they're getting. 40 miles an hour. Those giant flippers going in a fiendish crawl stroke. Faster than a torpedo boat. A torpedo boat, huh? He's a destroyer. This chap is called a devil fish for good reason. Fish from hell, yes, sir. See them go. Ooh, say, one of those gigantic pectoral scuffs. The boat, the boat's upside down. That's where the element of danger comes in. If the great fins fold over on the boys, they're done for. Swim for it, fellow. Make for the ship. And it's goodbye to the ship's boat. It's on its way to Japan. Come on, man of life, put some kick into it. Oh, hey, hey, this is over the odds. Sharks again. And if there's anything in the sea that attracts a shark, it's a man swimming. He's just got the kick to swim, and every kick is another invitation to those awful jaws to crunch a leg off. Well, thank goodness one of the boys is safe. Congratulations, old boy. It's better than doing a Jonah in the manta's interior. 
And while they're bringing the other chap aboard, the lookout shouts that the Manta's making off with their boat. It's worth salvaging. And maybe the boys would like another chance to express their opinion of that devil fish. Elasmo Brank, that's what you are. But there's a storm brewing. If that boat is to be recovered, they'd better make all speed. For when one of these tropical storms break, there's no time to think about mantas or dinghies. But for the sake of the nice little self-respecting fish, they'd like to wipe out this fish breather. Those great fins just fold over like a scoop. And a big fellow like this, 20 feet across and more than a ton weight, some of them even 5,000 pounds, eats his own weight in fish each day. Babies like a suction dredge or a steam shovel. All right, haul in the slack, boys. Drag him in. But what they'll do with him aboard our trim little craft is beyond me. Heave hard, boys. Don't let him go now. Oh, now, isn't that a tough break? Here, this boy has gone and got his foot caught in the bite of the rope. Help, help, help! Yes, but in freeing him, the line goes for the board. Well, that's settled. We can't lose both the boat and the manta. With this storm creeping up so fast, we uh, better take an extra hitch there, boy. Make fast there, sailor. Stand by to cut the brute loose if the skipper gives the word. Boy, they'll be lucky to ride out this storm. storm can last forever, but see what it did to our gallant old boat, high and dry on a little barren island. Weeks of work for all hands has salvaged about everything, washed up on the sandy beach. Next high tide will float us offshore. Might have been a lot worse at that. But the spirit of adventure is unquenched. The crew of a fishing smack brings news of giant octopus nearby. Can't afford to miss a chance to photograph one of these elephant spiders of the ocean floor. The diver is going to try and locate the octopus and pose him for the camera. The ocean floor is a dream world, silent, vast, mystic, unreal, lonely beyond words, beauty that haunts one, majesty all its own, inhabited by strange, weird creatures like this great sea anemone, so named because it looks like the windflower. You've seen little ones on the rocks at low tide. Long tentacles like the petals of a lovely flower. But when touched, they close up into a compact ball. Like the giant ray, it lives by scooping in its prey and sucking it to pieces. Now watch how quickly the fish that our boys throw down is enclosed in that living sepulcher. But the study period is rudely interrupted. The cameraman, ever on the watch, sees a great hammerhead shark circling about too close behind the diver for safety. Must get him up and destroy the menace so everybody takes a hand. Well, this shark business is getting on their nerves. They spoil all the fun. The 
shark family takes many queer forms. The hammerhead is about the strangest and one of the most dangerous. The barb and heavy line don't do the trick fast enough. So the captain puts a few slugs of lead into it. But even that doesn't stop a shark unless by chance one happens to sever the spinal column. Well, it's all right, diver. We've got him out of the way. Let's go. You know, this diver's rig isn't the easiest thing in the world to handle. Moving isn't hard, but progress is retarded, like a slow motion picture because of the water resistance. In this submerged world, queer, unreal lights play across the ocean floor. Strange fish peer out of unexpected corners. Forests of gently undulating seaweed. Gaudy shells, which at the touch of the diver's foot become animate and scuttle away. The camera can look so much farther afield. Merciful powers, what's this eerie shape? There it is. Look out, octopus! The crawling, irresistible, slimy, death-dealing monster of the seafloor. And he's behind the diver. There's no phone in his helmet. His pal to warn him. What a chance he takes. Good, good man, make him see! Oh, strange indeed are the wonders of the... Eight great, immensely powerful arms, each with its two rows of deathly suckers. Ooh, look out! That slithering death is right on you! He'll crush your bones into jelly! Look out, boy! Look out! Quick, now, quick! The helmet and boots are too heavy. Get out of them! Get out of there! Oh, thank goodness. Oh, well, let's call this fellow names, too. He deserves to be sworn at. You old cephalopod, that's you. Octopus punctatus, accent on the punk. Say, that was a close call. Three days out from Acapulco, dragged offshore by a good tug, refitted, restocked, everybody happy and raring to go. The only thing that couldn't be replaced was the diver's rig. That's probably decorating the parlor of some mermaid by now. Hello, there's something that looks interesting. Uh, interesting, I should say it is, big news. What the newspaper man would call a whale of a story. This is a real whale, 120 feet long. Whales are strange creatures, mammals, originally land animals. There she blows. They're warm-blooded, breathing air by lungs, having babies, not eggs, and nursing them with milk. Their greatest enemy is the swordfish, a monster mackerel. And there goes one now. Straight for the whale's vulnerable belly, he goes. Through ages of poking into other people's business, this fellow's nose has lengthened out until in big fish it attains a length of five or six feet sharp enough to drive straight through the side of a small boat. What a schnoz, what a schnoz. This swordfish is without doubt the gamest fish that swims the ocean. He goes after whales like a terrier after a bull. It's instinct, of course. Often a swordfish will charge a ship and drive his snout into the planking until it breaks short off. Imagine what it must do to a fish, even one with so tough a hide as the whale. What a fight, what a fight! The swordfish has all the advantage of quicker turning, sharper weapons. The whale's only defense is his mighty tail. One clean blow with that two-ton sledge, and even this terrific stabber would be put out of commission. But the swordfish rolled with a punch. Now they spar for a moment at long range. Then back goes the old stabber. Caesar, good, what a battle! Threw him clean out of the ocean! Friends, no one has ever been lucky enough to photograph any such fight as this before. But the race is not always to the swift, nor is the battle always to the strong. Remember David and Goliath. Oh, this is terrible. Leviathan in range. Dangerously wounded. Well, there can be only one end to this fight. Our boys decide to put the gallant old monster out of his misery. For this attack might go on for days. Remember, this whale weighs not less than 120 tons. There's a lot of him to die. 
This is risky work. It takes nerve to go in under those terrifically slapping tails and put a harpoon into the poor old beaten monster. But they're going to do it. Now. Zam! This new irritation sends the giant off on a new tack. Up he comes and out he goes. Look out for sharks, boy. Poor old whale. What a tragedy of the sea. How many times this happens, no one will ever know. There isn't always a camera so handy to record the battle. And even when our boys have captured the whale, the villain still pursued her. They signal a commercial whaler way off to leeward, as there's no hope of salvaging the valuable oils and fats of the huge windfall. They tell her to come a-running before the prize collapses and sinks. Once the breathing ceases, the huge body can no longer stay afloat. The whaler's fish captain gets ready his harpoon gun, the Sven Point gun, invented by a Scandinavian of that name. Come on, man, come on, get it over with. The poor devil's dying. It's the same old story. We must be cruel only to be kind. Now, give it to him! And all the while they're towing in the gigantic captive, the harpy is still battening on his entrails. This Christmas present is worth at least $3,000 to the whaler. Now get the airline out, boys. Bump in the air, don't let him sink now. Ooh, look at those great gaping wounds made by that demon of a swordfish. Fish from hell, that's what you are. You certainly had a lot of nerve tackling the big, strong feller. 600 pounds against 240,000. Now they're pumping him full of air. Ooh, what a mess you made of it, you. But the boys say, uh, we'll give you a break, Mr. Schnozzel. We're going out and get you, and get you with a rod and reel. That ought to be some sport. Yes, sir, when you talk about thrills, this game of fighting the monster swordfish with a rod and line certainly takes the pennant. I say, watch, we're going to show you a most unusual camera shot. It's like a fish-eye view of things. Now look underneath the boat and see the propeller in action. Now anybody who hasn't a firm grip on his emotions had better not look anymore, for something's going to happen around here, and I don't mean maybe. There he goes. You old boys who can remember the thrill that came when first you felt a tug at the cork on your line in the old mill pond when a six-ounce perch grabbed your worm, maybe you can figure this thrill. 600 pounds or so of the fightingest, maddest fish that ever snapped a hook is out there on the end of that slapping line with the reel singing its protest. Bring him up, bring him up, bring him up. Reel in, reel in. If he doubles on that line, you'll lose him. Wrists of iron are certainly needed for this work. Great catfish! What a leap! Whoa, another mad leap! Take up the slack! Take it up! Take it up quick now! Up he goes again! Don't let him trick you, mister! Don't let him trick you! Now, what a mighty surge that was to carry a quarter of a ton of fish clear out of the water. Would I say the swordfish was game? Now it's settled down into a battle of wits. How'd you like to run a handbook on this event? The fish knows that his only chance is to leap and turn in the air and try to foul the line so that he can double back on it and snap it off. How does he know it? Well, uh, how does he know how to swim in the first place? Instinct. The primal instinct of all created things, self-preservation. There he goes again. Impossible, you say. Well, there it is. The camera can't lie. But he's a desperate fish, a black-hearted scoundrel, of course, but you've got to hand it to him for the fighting spirit. Yes, sir, this is a real battle. Oh, murder and ounce. 
that leap surpasses them all. And to think that this little trifling line is expected to control such a stupendous battering ram as the swordfish has proved himself to be. It's just one desperate leap after another, and each time the human adversary must be on his toes, ready to reel in, to slack off, to play this brute as you would a mountain trout. But he's got to end sometime. He's bound to tire himself out at that rate. It looks to me as if he just about shot his bolt now. Steadily, slowly, patiently, but relentlessly, the captor is bringing the floundering demon closer and closer to the boat. Ah, this is going to be something else again, Morris. It's all well enough to hook him and play him in close, but what kind of man is this who thinks he can gaff this demon? Don't lose him, feller, don't lose him. Dig in your toes, boy, get your heels under a seat. Stick to him, boy, stick to him. Lips taken over, now heave away. Oh, 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 afraid you're going clean out of your class, old chap. Now you got him again. Put a twitch on his nose, boy. Right him, cowboy. Now look out for his heels. No schnoz or no schnoz. No darn fish that ever swamp can get the best of me. Whoopee! And that is that.